The virtual DOM is one of the fundamental architectural pillars of React.js, and in this video, we'll learn what exactly it is and why it's so useful. To understand what the virtual document object model is, let's take a step back and first take a look at what the document object model actually is. The document object model quite simply defines a standard for structuring websites in trees with branches and nodes. Let's take a look at this small HTML code snippet as an example. You can see that on the outside, we have HTML tags that envelope all the other code. Within the HTML tags, we have a pair of head tags that contain a title, as well as a pair of body tags that have a link, as well as a header within H1 tags. The document object model representation of this small code object would look something like the tree structure you see over here on the right hand side. At the very top of this tree-like structure, we have the root element, which in this case is the HTML tags, as they envelope all of the other code that we have in this code snippet. If we now look at the layer within the HTML tags, we can see that we have a pair of head tags and body tags that are on the same level. And that is why the tree structure branches out into the head tag and the body tag. If we then take a closer look at the head tags, we can see that we have a title in there and within the title tags, we have some text, which in this case is my title. If we now look towards the body tags, we can see that one level within the body tags, there is a anchor tag as well as an H1 tag. And that is why the tree structure branches out again into two separate elements. To finalize this representation, we can add the attribute href and the text my link to the anchor tag and the my header text to the h1 tag. So from this example, we can see that whenever we have a web page, we can look at the underlying code and translate that into the DOM representation, which is this tree-like structure. And if we want to make changes to the DOM, we have DOM methods at our disposal. These methods allow us to update the content, the structure, and the style of a website. Let's create an easy example by simply taking the code snippet that we had before, but we're going to link it to a script, specifically the main.js script. And within this file, we can now add some code that makes changes to the document object model and hence to our website. One thing that we could do is we could remove the h1 tags with a my header title. To do that, we can create an element and then we access the h1 tags by writing document.getElement by tag name and writing the tag name which is h1 within brackets. After that, we need to access the first element that is returned by this list. And that is going to simply be element and then within square brackets, we write the index zero. And after that, we execute the remove command. And as soon as I save this and the code is executed, you'll see that within the browser, the header, my header will be gone. So if we look back at the tree structure that we drew earlier, we have now made a change to the document object model representation of this website by removing this header. Removing an element from the DOM is only one of the many things that we can do. We can also add things to the DOM or make changes to the contents of an object in the DOM. So overall, we can keep in mind that the DOM is an acronym that stands for Document Object Model, and it defines a standard for structuring websites in tree-like structures. And as we have seen, it provides an interface that allows programs coded in JavaScript, for example, to access and update the content, the structure, and the style of a website. So now we already know what the document object model is. Let's get to the virtual document object model. Just a moment ago, we saw that we can make changes to a website using JavaScript. We saw that we can remove an element and we can also add new ones. One problem with the way that we made changes to the website using JavaScript is that our method was quite computationally costly. It is not the most efficient way to make changes to a website. So the publishers of React reacted to this, sorry for the pun, by creating a more efficient way to do this. 
And that is exactly where the virtual DOM comes in. The virtual DOM is a lightweight copy of the document object model that is kept in memory. Whenever we render an application in React, React creates an initial virtual DOM and stores this in the memory. Now let's assume that we re-render the application and one of the nodes has been updated or changed. What React does is it compares the initial copy of the virtual DOM with the updated version of the virtual DOM. And this is done during a process called diffing. Once the differences between the two virtual DOM copies have been identified using the diffing process, the reconciliation process starts, which means the changes are written to the actual DOM. The advantage of this is that we're only updating the parts of the DOM that actually experience changes. Since all of this is a bit difficult to imagine, let me show you a really easy example that makes all of this perfectly clear. On the left hand side, I have a simple code snippet and all it does is it writes hello HTML to the browser and then gives us the current time. Now this code snippet is re-rendered every second. And the method we use here is the plain vanilla HTML way to re-render without using React. And in the code snippet on the right hand side, I'm using React to do exactly the same thing. And the only difference is, is that instead of printing hello HTML, I'm writing hello React. So we can distinguish between the two. If I go ahead and execute both of these code snippets within the browser, you can see that on the left hand side, I have hello HTML and the time underneath. And on the right hand side, I have hello react and the time underneath. Let's look under the hood to see what the differences are over here. If we look at the code on the left hand side through the lens of the code inspector, you can see that within the body tags, I have two divs that are blinking the entire time, which means they are updating. Now they're updating every second because remember, we are rendering the code every one second to display the updated time. The inefficiency over here comes from the fact that we are updating the entire div even though we only want to update the time within this div. This is handled much more efficiently by React. If we look at the code through the lens of the code inspector on the right hand side, you can see that if I open the div tags, we only have the time updating. There is no other element over here that is being updated in contrast to what we see on the left hand side where we have the entire div updating. So in summary, the more efficient way of updating elements in the document object model in React is achieved by using the virtual DOM. I hope that you enjoyed this video and learned something new and hope to see you in the next one.